Code from Home, Chapter 2, Freelance Developer Industry Report. What keeps you going day after day? Your motivation is the most critical building block of your success. In this chapter, I'd like to give you some fact-based motivation on why creating your coding business online can easily be the most rewarding decision in your life. Yet, motivating is not every motivation is not everything. If you want to make your business work, you must show persistence. You need to keep working on your business for many months, even years. There's no quick and easy way to create a successful, thriving and lasting business. It takes time, discipline and focused effort. The truth is that creating a successful business is a straightforward endeavor if you have the right mindset, habits and motivation. Using the words of legendary speaker Jim Rohn, It's easy to do, but it's also easy not to do. This part of the book is intended to give you all the motivation you need to sustain for a long time, say one or two years, working daily on your new online coding business. In particular, I answer the questions, why should you even consider working from home on your online coding business? What are the advantages compared to working at a job? What are the disadvantages? What can you expect to happen after you decide not to follow the herd by working for a big corporation or the government? And last but not least, what can you expect to earn as a freelance developer? Let's take a high-level perspective and analyzing some major trends in society. Chapter 2.1 The Workforce Disruption of the 21st Century Massive change is the only constant in today's world. The nature of employment in a globalized economy is one great example. Millions of self-employed business people believe that freelancing is the most suitable way of organizing, managing and delivering one's talent to small businesses and creators in the 21st century. Freelancing platforms such as Upwork or Fiverr grow double digits year after year. Say you're a small business owner and you need to get some editing done for an ebook project. Would you hire a new employee for this project? Or would you just visit an online freelancing platform and hire the best editor you can get for a fair price? You may find the answer obvious, but I don't think that most people have already realized the second order consequences. Online freelancing is not a niche idea, but one can ultimately transform and dominate the orchestration and organization of the world's talent. It's accessible to billions of creators and business owners and will become even more efficient in the future. When I discuss the evolution of the traditional job market to a project-driven freelancer market, I often end up debating the ethical implications. Yes, there will be less job sec security in the future, there will, will be massive global competition for skill. The ones who deliver excellent work will get paid much better than their lazy, low-quality competition. You may not like this trend, but this doesn't change the fact that this is happening right now. The purpose of this book is not to provide guidance on whether society should or should not allow this trend to play out. It's about how you can benefit from this global trend. But taking a stand on this, I find it to be a highly positive development towards a more efficient workforce where you can simply focus on the work you like and you're good at and outsource everything else. To me, freelancing is already an integral in ingredient of my existence. Here's how freelancing impacts every aspect of my professional life today. By earning my income as a freelancer myself, I funded and grew my online business, Fingster.com. I hire freelancers for Fingster. The more Fingster grows, the more I rely on freelancers to create more value for my users. I host the most comprehensive Python freelancer course in the world. You can check it out uh, by just googling Fingster Python freelancer course and you will find the course. This is my way of centralizing and sharing, but also learning from the expertise of professionals across the globe. My online business would have never been possible in its current form and scale without leveraging the efficiency, efficiency gains of freelancing. Before freelancing become, became popular, large corporations practically monopolized, exploiting the benefits of globalized labor. Today, every small business owner can access the global pool of talent. This way, new arbitrage opportunities open up for every small business owner who seizes them. Both business owners and freelancers benefit from this trend, as well as the people who, like me, work on both sides of the equation. So how can you benefit from the global freelancing trend? One way is to become an arbitrage trader, buy and sell freelancing services at the same time.
You purchase the services you're not good at, you sell the services you're good at. This way you're continuously, continually increasing your hourly rate. Can you see why? A bit of napkin math will highlight the fundamental arithmetic of outsourcing. Say you're a fast coder, you write 10 lines of code per minute, but you suck at customer service, you write 0.1 emails per minute. Now you need to do both in your current position. To write 100, li 100 lines of code and answer 10 emails, you need 10 for the 100 lines of code plus 100 for the 10 emails minutes. So 110 minutes. Most of the time you'll be answering emails. 100 minutes out of 110 minutes you will be answering emails. Let's assume further that Alice has the exact opposite skill set. She writes only one line of code per minute. So she's t 10 times slower than you writing code, but answers one email per minute. So she's 10 times faster than you answering emails. To write 100, li 100 lines of code and answer 10 emails, which is ex exactly what you did, she'd need 100 plus 10, also 110 minutes. Most of the time she will be writing code. So she needs 100 minutes writing code and 10 minutes answering the emails, doing the same work. Both of you spend most of the, your time doing the work you suck at. But what if you decide to hire each other? You hire Alice to answer your emails and Alice hires you to do her coding. Now you have to write 200 lines of code instead of 100 lines of code, which takes you only 20 minutes. Alice now answers 20 emails instead of 10, for which she needs 20 minutes as well. In total, you two finish your work in 20 plus 20 is 40 minutes instead of 100 to 110 plus 110, 220 minutes. Together you save 180 minutes, three hours per day by outsourcing the work you suck at. It's a stupid idea to do everything by yourself because you're incredibly and inefficient in the vast majority of tasks. Fortunately, the freelance the freelancer disruption makes the world much more efficient. So let's get some clarity. Is freelancing for you? Chapter 2.2 Python freelancer to be or not to be. Becoming a freelancer is an exciting way to, growing, to grow your business skills, participating in the new economy, learning new technologies, practicing your communication expertise, learning how to sell and market your skills and earning more and more money on the side. Technology and globalization have expanded this opportunity and now it's up to you to seize it. But what can you expect from this new path of becoming a freelance developer? For example, focusing on the Python programming language. First and foremost, freelancing is a path of personal growth, learning new skills and earning money in the process. But in today's digital economy, becoming a Python freelancer is, above everything else, a lifestyle choice. It can give you fulfillment, flexibility and endless growth opportunities. Additionally, it offers you a unique way of connecting with other people, learning about their exciting projects and finding friends and acquaintances on the road. While this sounds nice, becoming a free Python freelancer can also be a struggle, with the potential to make your life miserable and stressful if you approach it with the wrong strategies and tactics. But no worries, this book is all about teaching you the right ones. So is being a Python freelancer for you? Let's discuss the pros and cons of becoming a Python freelancer. The list is based not only on my personal experience as a Python freelancer, working for diverse projects in science, data analytics and even law enforcement, but I have also assembled the, the experience of some of the top experts in the field. The good things. There are many advantages to being a Python freelancer. Here are the most important of them. Flexibility. You are flexible in time and space. I live in a large German city, Stuttgart, where rent prices are snowballing. However, since I am working full-time in the Python industry, being self-employed and 100% digital, I have the freedom to move to the countryside. Outside large cities, housing is exceptionally cheap and living expenses are generally affordable. I am earning good money, matched only by a few employees in my hometown, and I don't have to compete for housing to live close to my employers. It's a huge advantage that can make your life wonderfully peaceful and efficient. Taken to the extreme, you can move to countries with minimal living expenses. Earn dollars, but pay rupees. As a Python freelancer, you are 100% flexible. And this flexibility opens, up you, opens you up to new possibilities for your life and work. Second point is independence. 
Do you hate working for your boss? Being a Python freelancer injects a dose of true independence into your life. While you are not free from external influences, after all, you are still working for clients, you can theoretically get rid of any single client while not sacrificing your business. Firing your bad clients is often a smart move because they demand more of your time, train your energy, pay you badly, if at all, and generally don't value your work. In contrast, good clients will treat, treat you with respect, pay well and on time, come back, refer you to other clients and make working with them a pleasant and productive experience. As an employee, you don't have the freedom of firing your boss before finding a better one. This is a unique advantage of being a Python freelancer compared to being a Python employee. Tax advantages. As a freelancer, you start your own business. I'm not an accountant and tax laws are different in different countries. But in Germany and many other developed nations, your small Python freelancing business usually comes with a lot of tax advantages. You can deduct many things from the taxes you pay. For example, your computer, your car, your living expenses, working environment, eating outside with clients or partners, your smartphone and others. At the end of the year, many freelancers enjoy tax benefits worth tens of thousands of dollars. Next point on the list is business expertise. This advantage is maybe the most important one. As a Python freelancer, you gain a tremendous amount of experience in the business world. You learn to offer and sell your skills in the marketplace, how to acquire clients and keep them happy, how to solve problems and how to keep your books clean and invest and manage your money. Being a Python freelancer gives you a lot of valuable business experience. And even if you plan to start a more scalable business system, being a Python freelancer is a great first step towards your goal. Next point on the list is paid learning. While you have to pay to learn at university, being a Python freelancer flips this situation upside down. You are getting paid for your edu education. As a bonus, the things you are learning are as practical as can be. Instead of coding toy, toy projects in university, You are coding more or less exciting projects that have an impact on the real world. I would have loved this during university and of authors not. Um, next point on the list is save time in commute. Commuting is one of the major time killers of modern life. Every morning people are rushing to their jobs, offices, factories, schools or universities. Every evening they are rushing back home. They leave one to two hours of their valuable time on the streets every day or 200 days a year. In 10 years, they'll have wasted 2,000 to 4,000 hours, enough to become a master in a new topic of your choice, or write more than 10 books, 10 full books with a publisher and sell them on the marketplace. Commute time to work is one of the greatest inefficiencies in our society, and you, as a Python freelancer, can eliminate it from your life. This will make your life easier and you have an unfair advantage compared to other employees. You can spend the time on learning, recreation or building more side businesses. You don't even need a car, I don't have one, which will save you hundreds of thousands of dollars over your lifetime. The average German employee spends 300,000 euros on car. Author's note, I don't really get it. I mean, you can rent cars, you can, you can rent a lot of cars for 300,000 uh, dollars during your life. End of author's note. Family time, during the last 12 months of being self-employed with Python, I watched my one-year-old son walking his first steps and speaking his first words. Many fathers who work at big companies as employees may miss out on their sons and daughters growing up. In my environment, most fathers do not have time to spend with their kids during their working days. But I have the time and I'm very grateful for this. So are you already convinced that becoming a Python freelancer is the way to go for you? You are not alone. To help you with your quest, I've created the only Python freelancer course on the web. Again, check it out, out blog.things.com, become minus Python minus freelancer minus course, which pushes you to a Python freelancer level in a few months, starting as a beginner coder. The course is designed to pay for itself because it will instantly increase your hourly rate on the diverse freelancing platforms such as Upwork or Fiverr. Authors note, these are the two largest freelancing platforms on the planet and they are growing re rapidly, like double digit. It's really an exciting opportunity these days. End of author's note. <laughs> the bad things. But it's not all fun and easy being a Python freelancer. There are a few severe disadvantages which you have to consider before starting your own freelancing business. Let's dive right into them. 
First, no stability. It's hard to reach a stable income as a Python freelancer. If you only feel safe, if you know exactly how much income you will bring home every month, you'll be terrified as a Python freelancer. Especially if you live from paycheck to paycheck and haven't yet developed the valuable habit of saving money every month. In this case, being a Python freelancer can be very dangerous because it will ultimately push you out of business after a few bad months. At least if you are doing this full time. That's why uh, authors note at authors note. That's why you should uh, do this. You should start your freelancing business on the side, working as an employee full time, and then gradually grow your Python freelancing business and until you you feel ready to to leave the safety net of being an employee. End of authors note. You need to buffer the lack of stability by implementing a rigorous savings plan. There's no way around that. Second point, bad clients. Yes, they exist. If you commit to becoming a Python freelancer, you will get some bad clients for sure. They expect a lot, are never satisfied, give you a bad rating and don't even pay you. You might as well already accept this fact and write 10% of your income off as insurance for freeing yourself from those bad clients. I'm not kidding, set aside a fraction of your income so that you have the ability to fire a bad client immediately. You'll save yourself a lot of time, energy and ultimately money. And time is money in the freelancing business. Third point, procrastination. Are you a procrastinator? If so, it may be difficult for you to start a freelancing business because it requires that you stay disciplined. No boss kicks your ass if you don't perform. All the initiative is your own. Of course, if you have established a thriving freelancing business, new clients will line up to do business with you. In this case, it may be easier to overcome procrastination. But especially in the early days, when you have to make a name for yourself, you must show the discipline that this job profile requires. Make a clear plan for how you will acquire clients. For example, if you are a Python freelancer with Upwork, make it a habit to apply for 10 projects every day. Yes, you've, re you've heard this right. Commit first, figure out the specifics later. You can always hire your freelancers to help you if you find yourself with more projects than you can handle. Or you can even withdraw your services. But doing this will ensure that you never run out of clients, which will practically guarantee your success as a freelancer in the long run. Next point, legacy code. Python is an old language that naturally comes with a lot of legacy code. For example, many projects use Python 2 or old frameworks that don't exist anymore. Managing the various dependencies of a, of a Python project can be a curse. Make sure to ask more experienced developers and the original creators of a certain code base for support. This will make your life much easier. And they usually don't mind talking about their code. Next point, competition. Python is a well-documented language. Although, although the number of code projects in Python is snowballing, so is the international competition. Many coders are attracted to Python because of its excellent documentation and suitability for machine learning and data science. Thus, the significant advantage of writing, writing Python code that is fun can also be your biggest challenge. Competition can be fierce. However, this is usually only a problem if you are just starting and have not yet made a name for yourself. If you are doing, doing good work and focus on one sought after area, for example machine learning, you will have a good chance that plenty of clients will compete for your value time. Authors note, usually uh, being a Python freelancer is referred to be a um, seller's market, which means you as a seller of your skill will have all the advantages and the buyers will compete for your valuable time. End of author's note. Solitude. If you are working as an employee at a company, you always have company quite literally. You will meet your buddies at the coffee corner, attend seminars and conferences and present your work to your group. You will generally get a lot of external input regarding upcoming trends and technology. As a freelancer, you cannot count on these advantages. You have to intentionally structure your day well, read books, attend conferences and meet new people. Otherwise, you will quickly fall out of shape with both your coding and communication skills because you regularly work on your own. The ambitious way out is to continually grow your freelancing business by hiring more and more employees. 